Well, good morning, family, and welcome to Church Life. Welcome to those who are on Facebook, YouTube, and streaming on our website. We are blessed to have you with us today. And it's Palm Sunday, and we are celebrating our King, the Messiah, the Christ, who is Jesus. For there are no pr new praise reports that have been submitted, but we do have one prayer request. Marlene Selby, sister of Ernestine McCoy, died unexpectedly last Monday of cardiac arrest. She was 72 years old. She and her husband had just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. The funeral will be on Sunday. Please pray for God's peace and comfort on the family and for the McCoys who will be traveling to Virginia Beach. We do have several prayer updates and I guess I'll start with myself, praise God. I first want to thank you all for all the, the cards, the prayers, the, the, the emails, the, the, all the affections of love that has been poured out upon me and my household uh, doing my two surgeries. I am doing much better, praise God. I'm un unable to uh, still lift with my left, left arm a lot of weight, but I'm so much better, praise God. My doctors have changed some of my medications, and so things are on their way up. So we praise God, and I just want to thank you for, for praying for me and thinking about me and just all your acts of love. So Pastor Dave, praise God, is doing so much better, and I want to thank you. We had another uh, prayer update with Pastor Wade. He is doing much better. His vital signs continue to improve, and he is now driving himself to his doctor's appointments. Praise God. He has also completed his physical therapy, and he wants to thank everyone for their continued prayers on his behalf. Deaconess Maureen Griffin underwent another chemotherapy treatment on Friday. We don't have any updates on how it went, so please continue to pray for her that God will continue to have mercy on her and strengthen her. So we want to thank you for your continued prayers on Deaconess Maureen Griffin. Did want to announce for church services. As we announced last week, the advisory council met two weeks ago to decide when we would resume church services. The possible date was Easter, Sunday, April 4th, with all the COVID protocols to be fully enacted. Well, since then, however, the positivity rate has gone up. In Prince George's County, we need it to be at 3% or below, and currently the rate is 5.46. In addition, the number of COVID cases in our state and county is rising. Therefore, we feel it would be wise to wait for a better improvement so that until we can get back in the sanctuary. Pastor Lloyd will send out a round robin message on Thursday and will update, give you the update on our current situation. Until then, everyone, just be encouraged to continue to watch the Bible studies and the sermons on either Facebook, YouTube, or our website at 11 a.m. For general announcements, the advisory council, there will be a brief advisory council meeting today at 3 p.m on Zoom. So those are the announcements. Today's sermon is, when you have Jesus, you have it all. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, family. And again, it's Palm Sunday. And it's a, an occasion in which we rejoice and we celebrate. And we celebrate this because of what God has done. God who sent his son to be the answer for the world. God who from Genesis on and all through the Old Testament, gave a promise that he was going to send his Messiah, the anointed one, the one he chose to come in his name 
to bring salvation, to bring redemption to his people. And so today we want to talk about all the lessons, the lessons that Palm Sunday reminds us of, these truths that are so important. And that is when you have Jesus, you have it all. No matter what you might be going through, if you have Jesus, you have it all. And so I want to pause just to, if you pray with me real quick, that we can seek the Lord. Amen. Father, we come in the name of Jesus to give you all the glory, to give you all the honor, to give you all the praise, to say thank you. That you didn't hold back the best from us. We thank you for your outpouring of love, your outpouring of your faithfulness and goodness that touches each and every life. And so as you have allowed us to, to enter into fellowship with you, as you've allowed us to come into your presence, we seek your face, asking that every thought, word, and deed be to your glory, your honor, and praise. Have your way. Open our hearts that we may even more receive and, and embrace the truth that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, is the Messiah, and fulfills everything that you intended for him to do. May we grab a hold of it. May we run with it. And may your truth continually liberate us and set us free in every area where we may have struggles. All through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Lord, have your way here today. Bless these, your people. Remove every hindering force. But allow, but allow all of us, Father, to be good ground, to hear what thus saith the Lord, and may you bring fruit in every life, 30, 60, 100 fold. We love you, we praise you, we thank you, and we ask your blessing now on this word, your word. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we thank you, and we say amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our text is in Matthew 21, 1 through 11, verses 1 through 11. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, I title, I gave you the title, when you have Jesus, you have all you need, but there is so much in this text, praise God, that was exciting for me. There was so much, I, I think I might have changed titles several different times because there's so many things that jump out at you. So let's look at our text, Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. And, and this, this, this is the, the, the uh, scripture about Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And all that took place in all the Gospels, you know, Matthew, Mark, uh, Luke, and John, have the version of this entry, praise God. And, and there are certain things in each one that you can pull from and that you can glean from to really bless you. Amen. And so in Matthew, which is our chief scripture, it says, verse 1, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a coat and a, the foil of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks and rolled while other and, 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 and spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed him, they shouted, Hosanna! The son to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And so we see this triumphant entry and we see that there is a stir going on. Other scriptures tell us that the stir was going on because these people had seen God move. In fact, most of these individuals that, that was around, there was a group that had, had been there when Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave. And so they were there. They were excited. There was a buzz going on. You know how it is when, when, when you get that, you know, that praise report, how God has moved, how God has changed your situation from looking one way to another way. And so there was a stir. There was a praise. There was commotion. Amen. The king had arrived. Amen. And, and some got it and some didn't get it. But if you get it, you get it. Amen. And so we're looking at this stir and Jesus comes in. Amen. And, and, and this, had, this, this, this fulfillment of scripture. Amen. One of the commentaries says this, that, that, that this was one of the Psalms of Ascent in, in Psalms 118. The, the pilgrims used to say this as they came up to Jerusalem for their, you know, for, for the, the feast. And they would sing these things. And one of them, it, it, it says that, it says, you know, save now, O thou supremely great and glorious God, saved by the Messiah that comes in thy name. And this is what they would repeat as they came up. Save now. And there's a reason they were saying save. They were looking for the Messiah. The one who would bring redemption, the one who would change their lives and return the, the glories of the, of the golden age. And so they were anticipating, they were, you know, this was something that went on. And so Jesus was that fulfillment. And so as we look at this scripture, we're again reminded again that Palm Sunday reminds us of our victorious king coming. Come and praise God with purpose. It's the beginning of Holy Week. How many know, praise God, it was the beginning. He had set his face that I'm going to Jerusalem. And he knew, praise God, he knew what was coming. And so we really just want to grab a hold and appreciate the fact that Jesus was so focused to fulfill the, the mission that the Father sent, praise God, knowing that the weight of the world would be upon him, knowing, praise God, how bad he would get beaten, how, how he would be treated, it didn't matter. He came to bring relief for you and me. And so we want to look at this scripture today. And we want to bring out two things. One, Jesus is the promised Messiah and King. Praise God. You don't need to look for at anybody else. There's no other hope. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the Messiah. He's the one who came in the name of the Lord, the Father, that our Father sent to handle all of our issues. Amen. Whatever you dealing with, glory be to God. Jesus Christ is the answer. When you have Jesus, you have it all. And so as we look at this, one, Jesus is the promised Messiah and King. And two, Jesus Christ came to bring salvation. And so he was purposeful with everything. And so Palm Sunday reminds us that he's riding, praise God, in that this was a time where the commotion was there, where there was acknowledgement that this is the one. That God has sent. And it still echoes through the ages that Jesus is the one that the Father has sent for my situation and for your situation. Jesus is the one. And so if you have Jesus, praise God, you can be stirred too because you know that he can handle your situation. But Jesus, praise God, Jesus is the promised Messiah and King. We look at this, it says, as, as, he, as he entered the city, he told two of the disciples, praise God, go into the city, amen. He's, he's already, he, he's already, praise God, walking in lordship, amen. He's the king. And so you see this, he, he, here he is, go into the city ahead of you and you'll find a coat. You'll find a duck and they'll be tied up, praise God. They're waiting just for me. And, and, and when you, you know, get them on time and bring them to me and if anyone... Ask you what you're doing. Tell them the Lord needs it. And immediately they'll let you go. And this is what happened, praise God. They went, praise God, and, and the other verses that you'll see it were the owners of the donkey. The owners of the donkey said, what are you all doing? And all they had to say was, the Lord has need of it. And what's so powerful is this was done, as scripture says, to fulfill to fulfill, got to get this, 
what was spoken 500 years ago by Zechariah 9-9, where it says, Rejoice, greatly, daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a coat, on the fall of a donkey. 500 years. And this was fulfilled just to fulfill that word. Amen. So, so God is moving. And he's still showing those who can recognize that he's the one. And this is why it happened. But the owners, praise God, said, well, what are y'all doing? And all they had to say was the Lord had need of them and they let them go. Which shows that even the owners have a master. No matter what you're dealing with, praise God. No matter what your situation, no matter the boss, no matter the circumstance. It all has to report and fall subjection to Jesus Christ who is the Messiah. So these things are unfolding. As proof that he is the Messiah. He's the one. He's the king that comes. And he's not coming, praise God, you know, on, on a horse like victorious like most humans we No, he's coming on a coat. He's coming humble. He's coming saying that, praise God, that, that, that I, you can approach me. You know, I'm gentle. I'm approachable. Whatever your situation, I'm not a king. You don't see any secret service around me, praise God. No, your king comes to you riding on a donkey, letting you know that you can come unto me. And I'm here to help your situation, praise God. And so he came, praise God, riding on the donkey just to fulfill that scripture, just to fulfill that truth that God wanted that pointed. And for those who are paying, there are things that point to what God is doing. There are things that just say, you know, God, this is God. This is God. Because God has said it. If God said it, he'll do it. There's, there's a scripture that says, God is not a man that he should lie. Or, 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 you know, or a son of man that he should repent. Has he not spoken and will he not fulfill it? God is going to do what he says he's going to do. And so here he is, Jesus, coming in. Riding on his donkey, things falling into place, just like he said, amen, that he's that king who fulfills the prophecy, that he's that he is Lord, that, that, that whatever, whatever, he, whatever he wants to provide for his people, he'll provide it, because if the Lord needs it, can't nobody say no. He's the Lord. He's the one that you look to. He's the one that you count on. He's the one that you rest everything on, and it's Jesus Christ, because when you have Jesus, you have all you need. And so here he is. He comes in, and there's commotion going on. And, and you know what? What, what I, that this 500? There's excitement because you know we know later now that there was there was years that there was just silence. There was silence after Malachi. That there was silence, but but now there's activity again, and God is doing things. And, and there was a stir. They knew, you know, they was hearing things. Certain things heard. They heard things about Jesus, but they were seeing him on display. And so he came and he, he, you know, he was coming and, and, and even in some of the messages, it says your king comes to you. And if you listen to him, and you see what Jesus was saying in scripture. He told him, he says, you know, the thief, all who came before me were thieves and robbers. He says, and the thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But I have come. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And so he came, he was on a mission. He was on a mission to change lives, to, to, to address, to fulfill all that will have been spoken. In every life that will believe what God had done. He sent his son. And so Jesus is the promised Messiah and King. And you see this. You know, one of the, one of the, the scriptures that blessed me so much, praise God, is, is, is how, you know, the crowd that was around him, and this also, it, was, it blessed me that there was a crowd behind him shouting. There was a crowd in front of him. And here he is in the midst. Isn't that Emmanuel, God among us? You know, he's right there in him, amen. He's right there. God is there, praise God. And sometimes, sometimes we really, we recognize it. Sometimes we, we, we you know, we're, we're almost there, but, but God is there. And if we fully grasp his presence, amen, oh, it would make a difference. But the crowd that was there, many of them, as, as scripture reveals, had been there when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And so I want to look real quick. Let's look at John 11. 
Because Jesus is the promised Messiah. And when you look at that again, I was kind of blessed just looking at John, the 11th chapter. And we're just going to look at verses 21 through 27. And also, uh, praise God, we'll look at verses 39. Pretty much through the 39 through 44. Praise God. And so when we look at this, and remember our point, Jesus is the promised Messiah and King. That they had called for him. This is when Lazarus was sick. You know, and we know that he ended up dying. And Jesus said, nah, this, this is done for the glory of God. Amen. And so when we get to verse 21, Jesus was on his way. And Martha, she said, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. When you get it, you get it. See, part of the reason the Messiah came to was restore what had been broken by sin. And so it got us back in fellowship. Amen? It's good to know that you can call on God and there, there's, no, there's no barrier because sin has already been dealt with because of Jesus. And so now we can come freely without worrying and bring casting all our cares upon him because Jesus has already dealt with what was holding us back or really and that was sin. And so here she is. There's an established relationship. There is an established relationship. Mary, Martha, and even Lazarus. There was established relationship, amen? And because there was established relationship, praise God, that opens up to God to do whatever he want to do in your situation. So here she is. She says, Lord, but now I know that even now God, you will get, God will give you whatever you ask. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? And what was Martha's response? Martha said, yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. The Son of God who came into this world. Amen. When you get it, you get it. When we understand that, praise God, don't look to anybody else. Look to Jesus, no matter how hard your situation is, because he is the one who was sent to handle it. All you got to do is count on Jesus. When you get Jesus, you got it all. And so, praise God. She said, you are, you are the son of God who is to come into the world. From the, all the promises and in, in from Genesis all the way up, you're the one that God said he was sin. The father was sin. And so praise God. So when they get there and, and, and you know as it goes on, and so Jesus, praise God, gets to where they have laid Lazarus. And so Jesus says, praise God, just once more deeply he moved, came to the tomb. This is verse 38. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. He said, take away the stone, he said. But Lord, we got to pause. Now this is Martha who just got it. She said, but Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there's a bad odor. But he has been, he has been there four days. And Jesus, see, see, see first of all, when you, when, you, when, you get, when you have Jesus, you have it all. There's that reconciliation. And so what it is, wherever you are, Jesus is going to teach you. He's going to love upon you. and He's going to help you to get where you need to get to. Amen? Amen. He, 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 you, you, you got the first thing right. Praise God. You got the most important thing right. You know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He's the king. He's the one that God sent. You just don't praise God. You just got to have that experience to see just how great he is. Amen. He's still teaching you. He's still showing you that no matter what you face, I got that. I'm the one who was anointed, who was the chosen one to come and handle that situation. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
And so they took away the stone, and then Jesus looked up and said, and this is, it just, it blesses you how many times you read something, and, and then it clicks. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you, I, I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people. For the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe you sent me. That's the Messiah. I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to operate. I'm getting ready to do something. But I need them to understand I'm not doing this on me. I'm doing this in connection with Father, what we said. I'm doing this because you sent me to do this. There's a connection, amen? And when you get him, you get him. You get it all when you get Jesus. You know the rest of the story. I ain't got to say no. You know he when you know he called his name, and you know Lazarus responded because he's the Messiah. Can you imagine being in the audience and seeing him come? Hallelujah! If if if, if he can do this, he can do anything. He was the Messiah, the one who was sent. And it's declared, he wants all to believe that he's the one who was sent. He said, Father, I'm saying it for them. That they know, praise God, that no matter what is going on, I'm the one that they can come to. They can call on my name. They can look to me because I've been handpicked by you, Father, to handle this situation. I'm the one. When you have Jesus, you have it all. And I say it's so powerful, praise God, that Martha got it. And because she got the truth of who he was, she got everything that went with who he was. When we, no matter what's going on, we can count on him to handle the hardest things that we face. Because he's the Messiah and the King. But you know, if we look at... There was something that happened in the book of Luke that describes this coming, Palm Sunday. And it's called, well, it's really a time when Jesus was sad. And if we go to Luke, the 19th chapter, and verses 41 through 44, it says this. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side and they will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. That's the tragedy. When people don't recognize that Jesus is the Messiah, and so when their enemy comes against them on every side, they have no help. They're doing things based on their strength. And it made him say, he weak that, that those that he created can't get this. You don't, don't look to anyone else. All that you need is in Jesus. Because without him, you don't have all the resources. And so everything points to Jesus Christ as the Messiah and the King. Amen? He's the King. He's the one, and he does not want us to miss anything. They did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Praise God. You don't want to be one to miss something that God's trying to do something in your life. You don't want to miss, praise God, God trying to do a great exploit because your mind is not where it needs to be. No, we want to recognize and we want to embrace the truth that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He's the one that God sent. And 2 Corinthians 1.20 says this. That's why I said when you have Jesus, you have it all. 
Second Corinthians 120 says this, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. No matter how many promises God has made in Christ, the Messiah, they are yes. And so if you don't have Jesus, who is the Messiah, the Christ, you miss out on all those promises. But if you have Jesus, glory, you, hallelujah, the promises are yes, amen? And so we come in agreement with that truth. We, we have Jesus. We got everything we need. I might be going through a trial, but I got Jesus. He going to help me through this thing. And that's what Palm Sunday reminds us of. It reminds us of that truth, that he is the Messiah and he's the king. And number two, praise God. That Jesus Christ came to bring salvation. Yes, he did. He came to bring salvation. Everything Jesus did, his name is about salvation. His upbringing, he did everything in conformance to let people know that he's the savior of the world. When he rode into there, he was the savior. He was the hope. He's the one who's going to the cross. Why? That every life would be changed. Everyone, praise God, could benefit from having him as their savior. He is the one. He's the savior. He brought salvation. And time and time again, throughout his ministry, you saw him bringing help, bringing aid. In fact, praise God, if, if we go back, praise God, to Matthew 21, it says when, when, he, when he got on there, he was coming. It says the crowd that went ahead of him, ahead of him and the ones behind him, everybody was shouting, Hosanna! You know what Hosanna means? Save. Rescue us. Please, Lord, save us. And that's what they were shouting. That's what they were exclaiming. That's the first thing out of their mouth. Lord, say, Hosanna! I got, pr Hosanna! Praise God! Whatever's well, good, Hosanna! You the one! Save us, Lord. Save us. They were saying Hosanna because they had seen all of these miracles. The deaf, you know, could hear. The, the, the lame could walk. The blind was seeing. And then on top of that, what he had done with Lazarus, there was, a, there was a stir. That's why there was such a stir in the city. That this is the one who's saving people's lives, who's changing people's lives. Praise God. This is the one. He's the Savior. You know, one of the ones that, 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 one of the, his acts to bring aid because he was the one sent was, was in Luke 13, 10 through 17, which talks about uh, this woman who was bent over because she had a spirit that kept her from being able to be upright. For 18 years, 18 years, Satan had bound her. But it says on, on, this, on this Sabbath, Jesus was teaching. And he saw her. He saw his child that he had created bound up for 18 years. And he simply said to her, daughter, you are set free. From your infirmity. You are set free. And that's what the Messiah does. He brings salvation. To us. He helps us in every situation. Because he understands it. And, and when, the, when the Pharisees. Were, or, or the ruler of the, of that, of the synagogue. He was upset. Because how dare you. Heal this woman on, sat, on Sunday. There's six other days. And Jesus simply said, you hypocrite. Don't you let your oxen out to get water? He says, and this daughter, this, this daughter of Abraham, I want you to see the connection. Because even in, in there, God had promised, he told Abraham, oh, you, the, 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 the Messiah is coming. Shouldn't this daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound for 18 years, be set free on the Sabbath? That's how concerned he is about your situation and my situation, about liberating us. 
He's the Savior. Who, he's the one who came to bring salvation. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. <clears throat> you know, I wanted to pause, praise God, just to say, this past year has been such a challenge for me, for my household. We've dealt with COVID. We dealt with my, my wife's mom's sickness, praise God, who has gone home to be with the Lord. Dealt with me having two surgeries. And in fact, the very day that I was having my second surgery, my wife, Seal, and son, Nathaniel, was at the going home service of her mom. But yet there, and yet I, where I was, was our Savior. And the things, how, for me, it was, it was a challenge because I could not be what I wanted to be for my wife at this time. And I even, I told my son, I said, I need you to be there with mom. But it was a comfort for me to know that he who was keeping me while surgery was being done on me was so great that he could be there and provide comfort and strength for them while the service was going on. Because only Jesus can bring the salvation that you need. And that's what he came to bring. And that's what I experienced. You know, when I had my first surgery, and the next day I was getting up, and the nurse said, Mr. Russell, can you come around? And I was coming around, got out of bed, was coming around, and I felt my head was, felt like a ringing. And I walked around. She said, well, you can sit on this. You can sit, but let me put this, uh, let me put this paper here, line it up. And I said, no. Nah. I said, no, nah, I got to sit down right now. And as soon as I hit the chair, I went black. I blacked out. And when I came to, Mr. Russell, Mr. Russell, she was, when I came to, she, it was two other nurses in there with her and a doctor. Mr. Russell, Mr. Russell. I was like, yeah, I said, I'm all right, I'm here, I'm here. She said, okay, Mr. Russell, you good? Keep your eyes open, keep your eyes. And I did. She said, you just, you blacked out for a minute. She said, your vitals were good. Why am I saying that? Because when I did not know what was going on, my Savior was keeping me. See, he's the one who brings salvation. He's the one who can handle your situation and my situation. When you have Jesus, you have all you need. It was a good thing, you know, when I was telling my, my loved ones, they said, well, it's a good thing it happened at the hospital and not when you out driving. Praise God. That, my Savior, praise God, who orchestrated everything. And so what I'm here to tell you is that when you have Jesus, you have all you need. You have everything because he's the one who came to address every person's situation and every person's circumstance. He's the savior of the world. I want to finish up with just this illustration, with just this truth about this scripture. If you look in Luke, the same parallel scripture, you know why the people are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save us. So the Pharisees said, rebuke your disciples. Rebuke your disciples because they didn't get it. You might be a good man, but you're not the one. Rebuke them from saying Hosanna. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, if they shut up, the stones will cry out. And I thought about that. The stone. It could have been that somebody had to shout at that moment. But even more, I said, Lord, what? 
what else does this mean? And he led me to, 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 to just this scripture in Romans 8. That says, the, 821, the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. He brought salvation to people and he brought salvation to the whole creation because even the creation want to get out of this mess. And you can only find that salvation in Jesus Christ because he's the Messiah, he's the King, and he's the one who brought salvation for all of us. So let's worship him. Let's shout Hosanna to him. Let's praise him and give glory to God for what he has done by sending his son into this world to save all of us from our sins and from our circumstances. To God be the glory. And it is only by faith in Jesus Christ that all things are possible. And so if you happen to be listening, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't let another moment go by without believing what the scripture says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who came to save all of us from our sins, from our circumstances, from everything else that could be against us. Palm Sunday reminds us that Jesus is the King. Let us pray. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for sending your Son, the Savior of the world, the Anointed One, the Promised One, from Genesis all through, you said you would sin, and you did. I thank you for liberating all of our lives through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and our Savior. And I pray and ask, Father, that you enable all of us to grow in your grace and in your knowledge of Jesus Christ that we will see even deeper levels of your move, especially in such a time as this. In a world where people try to find answers to situations and other things, where the answer is only in Christ Jesus. I pray that the power and the truth of Jesus Christ will bless every life of all of your people even more. For we know, Lord God, that I, I, that Everything is taken care of, Father. Our eternity as well as our present. Because Jesus is Lord. So I ask you to bless your people. To strengthen and encourage your people. And help us all to be stirred up. Because we are enjoying your activity in our lives. We don't have to worry about dealing with anything without you. So we praise you. We love you. We thank you. And just ask that you be glorified in our lives. Thank you again for sending your son. And as we are in this holy week, let us always be mindful of how he laid down his life for us all. That we could have life and have it more abundantly. We love you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for giving us Jesus and for the Holy Spirit who lives within us. And so we just want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise and say thank you. And ask your blessing on all things and that you bring forth fruit in every life. 30, 60, 100 fold to your glory. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we thank you. And we say amen. Praise God. Family. Celebrate. Celebrate this day. Celebrate our King our Messiah, the Christ, who came to change our lives, who came, praise God, and I'm thankful that he is involved in all of our affairs. He handles it 
he takes care of situations and circumstances and that he is excited. He's a personable king. He's a personable king who is approachable for whatever is going on in your life. There's Jesus. And that's what the Father wanted us. He wants to, to enjoy Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a blessed holy week. Praise God. So excited for Easter. Praise God. The resurrected Lord. Amen. So excited for the victory that we all have because of Jesus. Amen. And I pray you all walk and live victoriously through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And encourage one another. And let's encourage each other because we all have challenges. But let us remind each other, Jesus is Lord. Praise God. He's the one. It's going to be all right. I'm so thankful. God bless you. Love you. Praise God. To God be the glory. Happy Palm Sunday, family. Amen.